Yo, welcome guys. So you have made it to the sixth video of this series where we're taking a look at all the weapons and the new skill specializations. And in this video, we're going to take a deeper look at the Wong. We are starting with the Touch of Despair, which is applying a curse, and that is the debuff of Wand players. You do have the option so that Touch of Despair is also going to two more enemies in a three meter radius. You also have the option to increase the duration that makes it easier to stack. And you have a chance of 50% to actually apply two times Touch of Despair. Let me show you what that looks like in game. You will see it, it's spread here, and we got one. And we would have a chance also that this goes up to two right away. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. Let's follow up with Swift Healing. Swift Healing is a skill that can be used twice. But um, if you use it the second time, the mana cost will be higher but it's increasing uh, the heal of a friendly target. You can make it, so when you're healing someone else, you also get 50% heal yourself. You can do it so you're actually able to use it three times instead of only twice. You can increase the range and you can make it so the target also recovers uh, mana based on the base damage of the target. This is what it looks like in-game. Next up is the Cursed Nightmare. Here, we are having the option to make our enemies fall asleep. If someone is asleep, the next hit on it is a guaranteed critical hit, but it also wakes up the target. But if you've paid attention here, the touch of the spear, so that dot does not wake up the target. So you can make people fall asleep and then put all the dot damage on them and they will not get out of it. First thing, you have the option so you can actually attack it twice before it gets removed. So you get the benefit here twice from the critical hit. Then um, you can make it so that they are instantly falling asleep and not only after the debuff is being removed. But this cannot be put together with enhanced mire where you're doing an AoE damage. So I will show you first what the enhanced Mire looks like. You can see now it's an AoE skill right here. And this is what the single version looks like. Instantly asleep. It's also signed by that moon, so other people know other people know what's going on and can maybe fire like their biggest um, burst damage on there for the guaranteed critical hit. Next up, we're having time for punishment. That is actually really flexible. So the first version is giving 80% uh, skill damage resistance to an enemy. Really good. So maybe one expert skill damage resistance is not like in other games that it's only against mages or whatever. Like every skill that you're using is considered a skill. You also have the option to turn that into a buff that you can cast on other people then or yourself. Then it will give skill damage boost increased by 80. That's a flat 8% increase on your damage. You can increase the effect duration. And just let me show this in-game. So we are stacking and now you can see we're having 80 skill damage boost right here as a buff. And we also see it with that little lightning ball over us. So like if you're casting it on someone else, the person realizes this. Oh yeah, this is the buff that I just got. Then you can also turn it into a burn right here where you're applying a burn debuff that is slowly eating away the mana of your enemies. Next up, we are having Blast Barrier that is either giving like a defense value of 100 and 120 for 6 seconds and then it has a day and night effect. At day, it's increasing the heals by 27% and at night, it's increasing your endurance by 270. You do have the option to change that up. So it's actually for max damage instead, and that is 50 max damage. You can increase the skill duration, or you can expand it so it goes into a party. So here now everyone in the party would get that shield and that buff. Next up is the Ray of Disaster. This is um, basically like a connection between you and the enemies, and everyone that is in the path of those connections will, deal, uh, will get extra damage. So it is wise to use it onto someone that's more like in the back, so everyone that is in between you and the target that you've chosen on again is getting the damage as well. You do have the option to expand that to two additional targets. You can make it so those targets have a decreased movement speed so you can keep them better at a distance and you can decrease the cooldown. And this is what it looks like in-game. 
spreading to those targets and I can move while this is going on. So next up we are having Cursed Explosion. So with the other skills that you're stacking your um, Touch of Despair, once you're using the Cursed Explosion you can basically make it all dealing damage right now. You can make it so the damage over time is kept but the Cursed Explosion then has 50% um, less damage. So overall this is higher DPS but less burst. Then you have the option to increase it to 10% for each despair instead of 5%. And you can make it so it is a target skill and not an AoE skill. Let me show you the AoE version first. So in a mass PvP context you will use the AoE version. In a 1v1 context you will use that 1v1 version right here. Because this will give you 6% lower cooldown. So next up is the Corrupted Magic Circle. This is basically an AoE curse that you're doing and also it does not wake up the sleeping target. You can, with Decaying Touch, you can make it deal more damage, but this cannot be stacked with the Rotten Swarm. And the Rotten Swarm can make the Magic Circle area last for 5 seconds and you can deal bonus damage if the target is asleep. So let's, let me see what it looks like in-game. So we're gonna make the target go to sleep first and then we're gonna cast it on top and now we are getting the extra damage here. Next up we are having Clay Salvation which is a really strong party heal but can also be changed into a uh, um, damage of like 3.2% but I think a 3.2% damage in, in losing a 420 base damage heal is like ridiculous so I would never use that unless you are like in a dungeon situation where you are not required to have any healing then that would be maybe useful then we also have the option that it removes weakenings and we can increase the range and this is what it looks like in game Oof. next up we are having the karmic haste that weakens the target and has an 80 percent chance that the curse is spreading to other enemies as well you can increase that duration by five percent but then you cannot increase um, the range or you can make it so it applies additional bonus damage based on the curse that you have put there and now we're going to use it with the spread see we are spreading it onto it left and right as well so you can either increase the duration or you can increase the spread now next up is the invincible wall that is giving a big shield based on the base damage of 560 percent you can also make it less effective, but then it goes for all the party members. So in the solo situation, obviously this is the one, but also you're getting 336 to all party members, which is really huge. And you can also increase the range so it's easier for your team to gather. And in game, it looks like this. Oof. Now we are coming to the last skill, and that is the Fountain of Life, which is a big area where we are regening health and if we are checking the first one we are also regening mana and we can increase the radius and we can also increase the duration and in game i think it looks really cool you're getting your region and everyone from your party that would step in would get the same benefits overall we can say that the wand is like the best support weapon that the game currently has to offer and with the overhauled bow the bow wand combination is the s tier helium yeah, and that was it with the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to click the like button if that is the case and subscribe or share it with your friends. If you still have any questions open, just let me know in the comments. I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.